So we're launching into this. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to um, connect us back to the trig calculus we were doing at the end of last term. Okay. In fact, we just sort of... Do you remember, if you recall, we were trying to uh, jam everything and we were like, oh, we're sort of a little bit ahead of schedule. Um, calculus of trig functions was not included in the AP3, but we managed to do it before then because it was kind of like, yeah, we're... Um, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're freaking killing it. So therefore, let's do it there. But, like, we're all conscious, you know, number one, it wasn't going to be in that assessment period. Number two, um, like, it's a big, it's a big topic. As you can see, it connects a huge amount to what we've been doing now. So there's actually one little thing that I left off the end that we just ran out of time before we started exams. And this was it. Now, we're going to meet it in the context of what we've been doing this week, uh, which is the kind of function that comes out when you integrate this. But we're also going to go back to just regular tree functions. Okay, good morning. So let's have a look at this. Now, revise with me on your reference sheet, right? There are two yeah. quotable results on, um, in, I think it's called further integrals or something like that, um, to do with sine inverse and tan inverse. Do you remember those? So what are the actual results? Can we do them from memory? The integral of one on root Yep. Pause. That's so okay, memory. let's think about this. <laughs> it's like best memory ever. Okay, now, which one is this? Where does this come from? Because one of them has a square root and the other one does not. That's a 10 one. Right? That yes, okay. Two. Now, good. Now, in some ways, you guys don't need to worry about this because you have a reference sheet in front of you. Uh, however, I've talked before about the fact that the body is Really, this reference sheet is not designed for you. This reference sheet is not designed for you. I would not expect that most of you uh, would use your reference sheet in any sort of extensive way during the exam. You might glance at it, and it's kind of like, oh, it's there as a safety blanket. But there's a time penalty that is incurred by anyone who uses the reference sheet, and you guys don't need to. By the time that you've used these a lot, like we're just at the beginning, really, uh, you'll be much more familiar with these, and you can look at that and say straight away, okay? But for now, I just want to call you back to, for those, um, for people who didn't have a reference sheet, even though this one, actually this one was on there. For those people who really, you know, we, we, we want to remember this, I want, I want to know why this one is this way and this one is this way, right? For me, the square root rather than the sign is the helpful way to remember which one is which. Why did a square root appear on the denominator when we were doing one of the tr just inverse trig ones? It was from the, you get a cos squared, but actually you wanted a cos there, right? So you had to take the square root. We had to deal with the domain there and say, why is it the positive case, not the negative case, and so on. So that's the way I remember that the top one, of course, is which one? Sine inverse. Because that's where, when you do sine, that's what gives you cos, and that's why you're going to take the square root. Whereas when you're doing the bottom one, it's tan inverse, right? Sorry, one on a, tan inverse. And the reason why is because what identity did we take advantage of in this case? One plus tan squared is equal to sec squared, which that by itself. There's the derivative of tan, so that's why we didn't need to appeal to any square root. Okay. All right, so when you look over there, which of those two is this closer to? It's clearly closer to the square root, right? This is completely different, and there's a plus as well, which is another difference. However, this is not in the form that I want it to be, is it? What am I going to need to do with that in order to get it somewhere close to here? Yeah, but so you yeah, had it first. Say that again. Okay, so I could take out a 4, right? Now, interestingly though, if I take out a 4, that's going to become 1 over 4, and then there's a 2 at the front. So then that becomes my, that becomes my a squared, and then I'll just have x squared there. Okay, So that's fine. This approach, what it's saying is, I don't want this to be 4x squared, I just want it to be regular x squared. So let's just jot down so that we all have this together. Here it is. Here's one way we could do this. When I take a factor of 4 out, right? a factor of 4 underneath the square root is actually a factor of 2 outside the square root. Do you see that? Because it's the square root of 4, which is 2. So if I pop a 2 out the front of the square root, then this becomes this. Like so. Are you happy with that? Do you see what I've done? Divide by 4. I could have put an extra step in there, I suppose. Um, but now I have, look, that's an a squared minus 
X squared. I mean, this is nice and convenient. A quarter is an easy square to work out, but it could be anything. It could be a third, and you'd just be taking the square root of what it'd be one over three, right? But in this case, it's nice and neat. So I look at this and I say, aha, there's a, a half all the way out the front, and everything that remains fits exactly into that first thing, right? So I'm going to have sine inverse of 2x. Now I could write 2x, that's fine, it's correct. Just for my own sake, because I'll get confused that way, am I dividing, am I multiplying, am I dividing by, I'm actually going to write x over a, which is a half, right? Which of course is going to give me the 2x that I was thinking of. Okay. 